inside these gold envelopes are the most important pieces of information ever known to humanity in the year of 2024. We're talking about the footies and NFL players will actually get something of substance in their lives this year because of this show. The footies are going to be in the mail. Stay tuned to find out who wins them all. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. No. No, Jason. It's footy time, Mike. This is a pretty big deal. Yeah, as is that phrase. It's reserved for football time and when I have players who are playing on <laughs> island games. It's a foreman time. <laughs> Welcome into the show. No, Mike has to protect it. Yeah. He has to protect it. People may want that, but it's like the old uh, that old Disney vault where they put all the yes. VHS tapes. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't let it Aladdin out yeah. every, you know. No, Every it's, week. It's too special. Even though the sales would have been better. No, I completely agree. I'm just, I think where we disagree is I find the footies extraordinarily valuable. Mm. Mike thinks they're stupid. Well, Mike and I have been busy lately. I mean, I got my yeah. I got my shirt on. Oh, you dressed up for the show? Yeah, I got my championship shirt on. Oh, what did you do, Mike? I yeah. dressed up for the show, too. Mike has the other uh, uh, other championship shirt looking on. Looking good, champ. Yeah, nice nice job, champ. Jay, this is a Jay, family, take off your shirt. What do you got under there? This is a family-friendly show, <laughs> so I will not speak my mind. <laughs> Well, we do have the Footy Awards today. Thousands and thousands of you have voted. Looking and at my shirt, Jay? <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I was. It looks pretty nice. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Looking good. Looking good. Yeah, thousands of you have voted. We have the Footy Awards that we'll announce here shortly. We'll react a little bit to the weekend's madness. I mean, football. Football's, football's just, fun. Football's just crazy, man. It's very fun. Have you seen the um, playoffs? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Jason, call. you got something to add? No, I welcome just, back. By yeah, the way, hey, hey, thanks for having me. We back. We welcomed no, you back with these our outfits. It's a uh, it's a great way to be welcomed <laughs> by two champions. Yeah, we had the uh, the most votes ever in the Footy Awards this this year Ooh, as well. Excellent. Um, but no, have you seen like uh, I don't know if it was a reel or a video on YouTube, but I I was watching it and they were basically saying like. The, the they were making the point that the only thing people actually watch on TV anymore is football. Mm -hmm. Oh, live television. Yeah, in terms yeah. of live yep. television, like uh, out of the fifty largest watched events of the entire year, it's like forty eight football games, and then I think there was one political, uh, like a debate or probably something? like the State of the Union or something. Oh, okay, and then there was the Oscars, the Oscars. Yeah, and then the other forty eight were football and almost NFL. All I believe so. Yeah, I, th Wait, I think the, so. I, so, like, the other sports didn't sneak I in? I thought there was some college football in there, but maybe it's just literally like just the NBA the NFL. championships not in there? No, nope. not in the highest watched events, no. Mm. So, like, mm. like TV is now just watching football, and so we watched the playoffs, and it did not disappoint. I mean... Such a good playoff We get So far, still got a couple games to go tonight, but goodness gracious. Well, I mean, last night. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we Thank don't you, know, Mike. though. We're recording before the games have happened. But what? good games they yeah. were yeah all that snow the way that the Steelers performed was good to bad yeah I mean we spent the weekend <laughs> doing our annual or monthly debate on domes versus not domes yeah, and retractable yes. roofs and weather and old school football and yeah it was a fun overcoming debate. adversity and that was a, a good time yeah, lots of a, opinions it was, fun, it was a fun debate there's so many opinions I really am too half of them are right I am <laughs> well I was gonna say yeah like uh I don't know how flexible you are but i really am team retractable that's fine because i do i want 95 percent of football played outdoors yeah i think too. that's where me it too. should be played it's where you play it in in grade school and high school and college like well, it's beautiful the weather is delightful it's an outdoor sport however i do i'm willing to draw the line at can't throw the ball hurricane level Close forces um sn having to hire half your city to to clear the snow out, things like that. But, um, yeah, okay, so it was the top 100 most watched U.S. TV broadcasts of 2023. 
And there were, yeah, it was 100% football minus two events, and three of the games were college, and the rest were the NFL. So why did they put in the key? Oh, they're like this was a perfect. This is one of those find the turkey, like the Thanksgiving parade made it, and I could not find it, but it's in there. It is. Yes. Where's Waldo? It's I in there find, somewhere. So wait, the Thanksgiving parade was one of them. Yeah, I was wondering why it was in the key and oh, not in. Boy, the, we we turn that on every program. Thanksgiving. We do. Does everybody here turn the parade on? Uh, no, it might, it might make it on. We do. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, when I was twelve. <laughs> Oh my gosh! You have children, though, right? What? Uh, yeah. what, what they do, don't care at all. What are the big popular balloons these days? I don't know. Snoopy's still out there. Snoopy, yeah, <laughs> exactly. They didn't upgrade them. <laughs> they didn't change them. It's just Snoopy. Um, but yeah, football. Football right. was fun. Uh, what else do we got going on? We got the DFS pass. Right now, it's free during the NFL playoffs, so you can go and pick that up. DFSPass.com. Uh, throughout the rest of the the playoffs, so check that out. We have a quick question today from Instagram. Uh, here's the question. Uh, Car Stimke writes in and says, when is a good time to turn the season over for a dynasty league? Is it post Super Bowl? Post your Super Bowl, which yeah. has already happened. Yep. Um, personally in every dynasty league that I'm in, I think that the right answer is as soon as the championship game is over and you know who your champion is, it, it goes to next season. So you reactivate your next year's league. If you're on a platform that requires you to reactivate, you refill the fab budget for off-season acquisitions in a dynasty league and you open up trading because now you've now you're ready to ready to rock yeah that's what we just did you know mike took it home in our sure dynasty league did. and uh we refreshed to the next year which cleared out uh, many many gifts that he had already posted but then he has resumed like we are kind of keeping each other accountable yeah, we at are. this point definitely when he posts something it reminds me to post something. That's a good reminder something. that I should go post. I'm going to keep restarting these <laughs> leaks. <laughs> All right, before we get into the footy award winners, again, thanks to everybody who voted, we should talk about these games. Let's start with the 45-14 to 14 drubbing. Houston dominated. Flacco pumpkined. Yeah, he did. And, For, and, and in the second half, though, like, the, the Browns – the game was really tight at halftime, right? Am I remembering that correct? You are not. I don't believe so. I don't think it was super tight. It was closer um, before What was Flacco the score? Kyle the score was 24 to 14. Okay, so they had gotten a touchdown like right before the half. Yeah. But it was it was close, and the Browns were playing well, and it felt like the – It was all back and forth at that point. And the, the one throw where – I don't know if we ever got the answer. Was was Joe Flacco throwing it away, or was he actually trying to make the throw to the receiver? Because it ended up in between both of those options, and it became a pick, and then it was just it was done. C.J. Stroud is the youngest quarterback ever to win a postseason game. He's 22 years old. He played out of his mind yet again. Yeah, he did. Uh, they don't have Tank Dell. They lost Noah Brown. Didn't matter. Nico Collins, Dalton Schultz. Brevin Jordan, uh, if you have C.J. Stroud in a dynasty league, I want you to hold some sort of party and event for your for people to come and celebrate you because I can't imagine wanting a quarterback much more than him. Oh well, and you should. We talked about Stroud a lot on the. Where did he slot most, in on the dynasty show? Well, it wasn't. It was not just where he slots in. It became a conversation of who do you want more now. C.J. Stroud or Anthony Richardson? Mm. Stroud, easy. Okay, easy. I don't easy. know. This, I don't. Think I don't that's think easy. it's easy at all. I do. Okay. Well, that, well, you should check out the episode. Yeah. No. I mean, I'm not saying there's no debate there, but look, uh, Anthony Richardson. We saw, we saw crumbs from Anthony Richardson to no fault of his own, just little bits of what he brings to the table. But one of the discussion points had to have been the fact that this is a player that is going to be exposed to injury on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean that was talked. About. That's going to be part of the equation. Now his his path to fantasy glory is very clear when you run the football like that. So I I don't blame you. I just think C.J. Stroud is C.J. Stroud. He's guaranteed. got he's got a 15 year window now of like being a you know Mahomes Herbert esque type of talent I, i'm just so impressed with that kid yeah he yeah. he is great both quarterbacks in this game threw three touchdowns 
Um, five of the six were just to the Texans. All right. And Poor Flacco. Yeah. It, the, the only other thing I think you could say positively from the Browns is just David Njoku continues to look like yes. a star, and he's going to be so interesting where he's drafted next year because um, – They came out and confirmed Watson's going to be the guy. And that they, is – Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that Stefanski is came out. the problem to me is that <laughs> – is that he was great with Flacco, and we had a couple games of him playing with Deshaun Watson. He was good Watson. with Watson, yeah. He was, he was mediocre with Watson. He was average with Watson. He was not special. And so that's the question. Is like, Yeah, they were scoring more with Flacco. I mean, really, that's yeah. that's the, the crux of it. Yeah, that will be a huge debate. I will not have the level of confidence in Njoku going into next year with Watson that I do right now with Flacco, for sure. But they have talked about keeping Flacco around. So we'll see. We'll see what he wants. Kansas City uh, just manhandled Miami 26-7. to It was basically one good play by Miami in the entire game. Yep. And mm. it was the fourth coldest game in NFL history. Nice. So and it was all on Peacock. Yeah. And yeah, people were was, not happy. Yeah, I mean, people they, aren't going to be they, happy when they have to. They watched. People can grumble and get all mad online all they want and then they said was it 23 million people watched it when I my screamed. when my dad texted me and said is this game only on peacock <laughs> i began to wonder how much tech support i was about to provide yeah it's it's across the nation uh the youth has been helping the elderly learn what peacock is and what streaming services are but it was successful it was the most streamed Television, anything in the, U Wait, the U.S. Are you of all time, yeah. For a, probably for a live event, I for mean, a live stream. I imagine it's, because it was all dedicated streaming. You're saying, yeah. So people were not okay. It's wow. unbelievably bush league. Like eh, you got to, no. you got. I don't think it's bush league. I think it is. Well, you, pay, you're gonna have to. NBC pays a lot of money, right, for that game. <laughs> you're gonna have to force the issue someday, and this is the day. They didn't force the issue well, in mean, the morning. Yeah, but how could people complain about this when when their Thursday night football games are on Prime all year? It's Prime a, is a pay, a pay service. Yeah, playoff game feels different. Okay, so you feel like because it was a yeah, it was something people expected to be able to watch. It, it's always like this though. When when Monday night football moved to like ESPN, yeah. it's like oh that's Bush League. You're gonna pay. It's always gonna be like that. This is progression. Let it happen. You're happy with? Uh, I'm absolutely happy. Let's get everything on yeah, streaming. It's, it's, it's once, whatever. It's once, still Bush League. Once everything is streaming. My parents didn't pay. They didn't want to watch. Once 100% of all programming is streaming, I can stop being spoiled by people online who are watching more like on satellite and they know what happens 30 <laughs> seconds ahead of me. Stop it. Let's That's all fair. get on slow internet together. Oh my gosh. Sometimes we've had these games, Foot Clan, where like the three of us are watching the game on three different providers. Mike will be on like DirecTV. I'll be like on YouTube TV and Jason's like, Maybe he's on YouTube TV, but he's also driving or something. <laughs> and then it's like, Mike will be way out ahead. Yeah. And he'll be like, I can't comment on the play. But it'll, sometimes it'll be vague. It'll just be like, OMG. And then we're watching close. Or, yeah. or there it is. And then we're like, what? There's what? Yeah. And then it was started at that. And then it had to be, I have to, I have to type in what I want to say. And then I wait 20 seconds. And then I send it. Well, look, my, let's get back to the game. Miami. Right. Huge, that game sucked. Huge wet fart of a performance. I'm super disappointed in them. They didn't show up. I don't care what anybody wants to say about the weather. Both teams had to play about the weather. They, they. It's not like they, you know, the 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 roof came on when Kansas City w had the ball. And it's not like every player in Miami has never played in cold weather in your life. That's a ridiculous assessment. They've all come from different colleges all over the world. Not this. Okay, but listen, you got to be prepared to play a football game. I mean, I've what? looked at the numbers, by the way, the actual numbers of bad weather games versus like these dome games. And it's like a four point difference. This game was not it's what? Thirty three points in this game. Mm -hmm. Miami didn't show up. They had every ability to win home field advantage for the last five games of the season that they farted away. And then they go and they get their comeuppance by having to go into Arrowhead. So I look, they suck. <laughs> Tua sucks. Oh, whoa. McDaniels whoa. didn't have a good game plan. I would uh, if we're if we're talking about all the sucky things. I think Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs wide the receivers, Chiefs. Uh, the wide receivers not named Rasheed Rice. They all suck. They're they're terrible. But Rasheed Rice looked very he looked course. great. Yeah, it, it, the cold didn't ruin Rasheed Rice. How many how many playoff Arrowhead games does Rasheed Rice have? How much experience in that cold Arrowhead weather? One. Oh, okay. 
All right. He lives so maybe Johnny Wada could have made a play. He does huh? live. He lives in cold weather now. Oh well. I'm yeah, just I saying, mean, the guys if you Miami, live around, look, if you open your fridge long enough, you can get acclimated for that football game coming up. They should have stood in front of I mean, of it's fridge. ridiculous. We, we, win home field, and then you cannot complain. All they had to do was win the last week of the year. I don't disagree with that part. Home. Green Bay blew the uh, – p- Paduti. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> the, the, the barn doors <laughs> off. The respect, the pride, the honor, the – I mean, every, every nice, oh. good feeling that a Cowboy fan has – or has ever had whatever is honorable, whatever is good, they were embarrassed. I mean, flat out I'm shameful. embarrassed to have picked them to go to the Super Bowl. Mm. I'm embarrassed to have been associated with a team that couldn't show up at home where they've dominated all year long. And humongous credit to Green Bay. Yeah. 48-32, that's not the real score. It was 48-16, and then the backups came in. Green Bay just undressed this vaunted defense play after play Dallas would spend the whole drive going down the field over six minutes to get a field goal and then Green Bay would score in like four seconds and then they'd do it again good I'm glad that's the conversation because the Dak didn't play well he did not play well but the defense was it wouldn't e- matter the defense was equally bad like you would there were a couple pivotal moments where it was okay if Dallas can do this it really does feel like they can get back in the game. And they got, like the second half, they got the field goal. Really should have had the touchdown. A few and it, and moments it was, later. And it was, okay, let's see. It, one big defensive side. Oh, nope. No, <laughs> they, they can't stop anybody. Jordan Love is destroying them. Luke Musgrave running wild like he's invisible. And they and I think Reed had zero yards. Jordan Love had a perfect passer rating. Aaron Jones was a doing monster. whatever yeah. he wanted. People forget how much time Aaron Jones missed this year that really could have hidden how good this Green Bay team was capable of being. When you have a play action game like that, they dominated Dallas. Dallas is an embarrassment. It's Some been 29 man. years since they got out of the divisional round. And this is coming man. from somebody that was actively rooting for Dak, wanted to see Dak and CD carry on. What what they brought me and Mike in fantasy, right? but they were spent. No, no they, I mean, fantasy-wise, they kept it alive. Like, just I guess the in the end. Like, the, the end box score is Dak was like 403. CeeDee Lamb was like 9 for 110. And then Detroit, 24-23. What a game. Hanging on, knocking off Matthew Stafford and the Rams. I mean, that was a great, great, fun-to-watch game. So much scoring back and forth. Then the defenses start stepping up uh in the second half it looked like after the first quarter that this was going to be a game that hits like a hundred point over under the defenses step up the run game is stopped uh, people have to come through puka just was amazing and really what this game came down to for me was the rams moved the ball no problemo but when they got near the end zone the lions defense stepped up yeah and they just couldn't punch it in because you can't run on them there, and that's how the Rams score so many of their touchdowns. Um, they just kept throwing to Cooper Cup, and Cooper Cup unfortunately did not. Congrats! Did not. Get Congrats it done. to the Lions fans out yeah. there who now, thanks to the Cowboys losing, are going to host another playoff game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they will play the winner of the Philadelphia Tampa Bay game in Detroit. And I can't wait. That will be fun. First playoff win in 32 years. Oh, man. So that's crazy. Yes. Uh, it's, so as of this recording, we don't know the outcome of the Steelers, Bills, Eagles, yeah, Buccaneers we do. games. <laughs> yeah, do we? we do. Well, we know the Steelers, Bills outcome. Okay. Oh, great, dude. If you if that goes <laughs> sideways for you, Bro. you're going to be – Look, I your love – Your Twitter, I love, at Jason FFL. Yeah, at Jason FFL. I love Tomlin – I love oh, I love the Steelers as as an organization. They got no chance without Watt to beat the Bills in Buffalo. No chance. It's over. It's Keep already, saying it. It's already done. I'm not worried. And the uh, Eagles Buccaneers game. Uh, no AJ Brown. That one. That one. Away. That one looks a little <laughs> scarier. <laughs> the, the, you know, you want to say the Eagles. Um, they should be able to do it, right? They should. They absolutely should. But I think they will. But humorous things to be talking yeah. about when it's over. Uh, did you guys see the? Um, it was probably pro football talk that was put, but they were talking about uh, 
that Mike Tomlin will be deciding at the end of the season what he will be doing. Wow, I didn't so see that. There's at least some grumblings that no, no matter what happens, that Mike Tomlin will be just his choice. He walks away. I guess. I don't know. We hadn't talked about Bill Belichick leaving, right? I mean, and Jared Mayo taking over as the yeah. Head we coach. haven't that we have not talked about that yet. And then Tyler Higby tore his ACL and MCL. Yeah, that's a I brutal don't know if you hit. Could say he tore it. Someone else right. tore it for him. That was that was it's a brutal hit. It was so bad. So Bill Belichick is out there. You got any predictions right now? Yeah, he's going to sign with someone and lose with them. That's my prediction. You, you, wow. you want to pick a team? Oh, man. Uh, the Washington Manders. I hope he Where retires. do you think he goes? I, I do, too. Retires. I do, too. I hope he retires. He's too Go great. Go live your life, man. Too great of an all-time coach. I think like, Atlanta. So that, I think that's the odds-on favorite right now is is the Falcons. So, yeah, Gerard Mayer, Mayo took over in New England. They didn't even have to go through a hiring process. Yeah, they had all the contracts yeah. kind of set up for it. I loved all the NFL insiders uh, reporting as soon as Mike Vrabel is let go. Whoa, Vrabel be on the on the fast track to be to being the Patriots head coach if they choose to move on from Bill Belichick. And then they moments later, Bill Belichick they are moving on, and oh, Mike Vrabel, and they're like, oh no, actually, we turns out. New England had this contractually figured out the whole time that Mayo was going to be the replacement. Bill knew. He, Mayo knew. Like, everyone knew. Where was the reporting on that, NFL insiders? No. How do you not know? No, and so Mayo takes over. Yep. All right. Quick break and back with the footy awards. Well, you know, there's not – Many things in this world is illustrious, incredible, valuable, as the heavy, heavy, um, <laughs> expensive, incredible footy awards. Yeah, let's do it. Welcome to the annual footy award show featuring the best and worst in fantasy football, including performance of the year. The Waiver Wire Wonder, the Poopiest Pants Award, and many more. It's the annual footy award show. Let's go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I love that music. <laughs> the results are in. The music with the very professional voice announcing good work, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mm. And just talk about regular thinking. And, of course, the Poopiest <laughs> Pants Award. Very popular award. Yeah. You would think people don't like it, but they love getting that. They actually do. Well, it's uh, a footy. A footy's a footy. A footy's the people a footy. are going to be excited to get yeah. it. Yeah. You're not mad. You want, you're you like, oh, I only got the special effects Oscar. No, we didn't even make up any names to get them these footies. These are all the real, oh, okay. these are all the real people. <laughs> all right. Um, let's get to it. We've got all the votes, the most votes we've ever had for a footy award. Um here we go. Performance of the year. Which single week performance was the most impressive? And uh, we had Dax week 10, Lamar Jackson's week 17, five Ooh. touchdown performance. Devon Achan with the mm, 203. The, uh, the Christian McCaffrey week 15 against Arizona, three touchdowns. Jamar Chase, 15 for 192 and three back in week five. And then Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb week 16 and 17. Cooper, 11 for 265 and two. C.D. Lamb was 13 for 227 and 1. Those were your nominees. Now, I am curious. Who did you vote for? I voted for Devon Achan, my man. I loved right, okay. him. And, Mike, uh, did you vote for C.D.? Of course I voted for C.D., man. The, I'm, I got this shirt because of C.D. Lamb. The winner is. Wow. Wow. Amari Cooper. Week 16 with 31.36% wow. of the okay. vote. All right. That was such a huge performance. I mean, you, Andy, you know. Yes, yes. It was also not super expected. Like, CeeDee Lamb against the Detroit secondary, we knew good things should happen. But Amari Cooper with Joe Flacco, but when listen, you really need him, how close was Listen it? how close this was. The winner was 31.36% Amari Cooper. Okay. The runner-up with 31.05%. Whoa, they both had 31%. A 32-vote difference. <gasps> Devon A. Chan oh, in week three. 
So it would have only been, you know, it would have wow. been a 33 vote difference without you, Jay. Wow. So congratulations, Make sure Amari you Cooper, and of course, your footy is in the mail. I'm that sorry. Is, sorry, CD, I tried. That was close. Uh, I'm sorry, A-Chan, you, you missed out on 33 people. Uh, it could have changed the what fate of your life. CD Lamb was third, but it was down at 12%. Okay. All right, for number two, we've got the Fantasy Reapers Man of the Year, which unfortunately is the uh, the player's injury that hurt fantasy managers the mm. most. Last year, Cooper Cup took this home. Yeah. This year, the nominees were Nick Chubb, J.K. Dobbins, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, Justin Jefferson, and Mark Andrews. And the winner is... I don't know. The first round running back, Nick Chubb, uh, okay. at 41%. Yeah. That's a pretty good vote. Runner-up was only 24%, so th this is a pretty big landslide victory for Nick Chubb. The runner-up was, was that? Justin Jefferson. That was week two. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, he, he lost the whole season. That sucked. It was not good, but if there's any consolation to a devastating, horrible, gruesome-looking injury... I got to think Chubb's feeling pretty good about it now because you've got a footy. <laughs> it's in the mail. Congratulations. <laughs> the last year, all the rehab, totally worth it. I would it. imagine that's his two words. Right. If you were to, yeah, if we had a microphone in his house right now, you'd say. Worth it? Worth it. Yeah. I tried to tuck Nick Chubb hey. on my uh, on my um, roster yeah. for the final week of the year to try, just in case he was a keeper valuable player. But. He played on Thursday and I couldn't do it. Yeah, it makes. But that, we'll see what he when he comes back next year. Yeah, please come back, Mr. Nicholas Chubb. Let's see. We got the poopiest pants. Oh, award. the right, the right man in charge yeah. of this one. Yeah, despite high expectations, this player let fantasy managers over down over and over again. Last year was Kyle Pitts. This year, the nominees: Ooh, Austin Eckler, the running back two; Travis Kelsey, the tight end one. Oh, we are unforgiving for the end of the season. Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback one. Tony Pollard, RB8. Damian Pierce, remember that guy? RB18. And Miles Sanders as the running back 20. Uh, there's only one guy that can win this. There's only one guy? Yeah. <laughs> there is only one man. Oh, 50%. Yeah, I knew, I knew it would be a landslide. <sighs> Sorry, Austin. Uh -huh. But hey, yeah. that, worth it, right? <laughs> worth it. So Your Austin Eckler won it. Mail. Austin Eckler at 50 percent the runner-up was appropriately named tp oh tony pollard tony pollard at just 17 percent yeah, i mean I, you're the running back two drafted and the yeah. fourth pick overall but you did, i yeah. mean it's similar to kelsey where they both got off to kind of strong starts the problem is eckler got injured then he came back and struggled a little bit looked like he was back and then yeah yeah it was really almost the, the pump fake of you thought he was back like, that was even more painful. I'm old enough to remember week one, guys. Remember Austin when Eckler Jason was... turned that trade down? Oh, wait. the uh, I got, I think I've run, like, Sa run, Saquon and a couple couple second round picks. Two picks-ups. twos and Saquon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And you said no to that? I did. <laughs> yeah. And you wonder why some teams drafted Bryce Young <laughs> before C.J. Stroud. We all make mistakes. Yeah. All right. The Waiver Wire Wonder Award. Which undrafted waiver wire stud was the best signing of the year? Some good contenders this year. Last year, Justin Fields won it. This year's nominees were Kyron Williams, Puka Nakua, Nico Collins, Jaden Reed, Brock Purdy. All great pickups. Uh huh. But the winner was which one of which, the two? Which Ram? <laughs> yeah, which Ram? Who got it? Kyron Williams. Oh, okay. Okay. That's a pretty big deal. 48% of the vote for Kyron Williams. Really? The runner-up was Puka Nakua with 47% of the vote. Wow. So it was only 111 vote difference. Man. Almost everybody voted for one of those two Rams. They had like 88% of the vote. And Kyron Williams, your footy, is in the mail. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. Wow. Man, and he, the Rams know how to draft. He missed four weeks. The Rams, you know what the Rams know how to do? Fifth rounders. Yeah, trade Trade back. all their picks four fifths. <laughs> just own the fifth both, round. Both Kyron and Pook are fifth round picks. Wow. Need to see Kyron work out because uh, we liked him, but he yes. was one of those low odds players. Once the yeah. draft happened, you're like, well, it's, I like what I – but he's not going to get a chance. It's funny because coming into the season, I feel like I was um, – decently excited about cam Akers, like the the, the role and oh, the yeah, opportunity yeah. and i don't know if that is a good thing in hindsight or a terrible thing in hindsight because 
Cam Akers wasn't the dude. He was worthless. It was a bad, uh, bad analysis. But also, like, the Rams running back role was <laughs> super valuable. Yeah. So I uh, don't know how to feel about that one. <laughs> All right, next up. You should up. feel bad. I'll just tell you. I'll, I feel bad. I feel pretty <laughs> terrible. Cam Akers. I mean, Cam Akers. Remember that guy? Oh, Cameron? That's... All right, Cameron. Yeah, Cameron. Oh, man. Cameron he could, could win an he award. He could win an award today. He is on this show. All right, number five, the fantasy he is on this show. quarterback of the year. Come so this on is in. factoring in draft game, uh, draft position, big game performances, impact to fantasy managers. Who was the best quarterback to draft this year? The nominees are Josh Allen, last year's winner Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and Dak Prescott, the winner of Quarterback of the Year. Wow. This one shocks me. It is Dak Prescott. Oh, impact, baby. I mean. The impact. Impact. And he got. Well, he he ran away with it. He ran. That's what was shocking. It's not that Dak won. I thought I I thought it was going to be Josh Allen uh, as a, one of the best draft picks came through with the draft capital. Obviously, it cost you a lot more than Dak, but Dak was I think Dak was primarily a waiver wire guy this year. Well, he whoever was, he was drafted, but then whoever yes. got the explosion weeks, yeah, you probably but, picked yeah. him up. I mean, Josh Allen only twenty two percent of the vote in second place. So Dak, this is an impressive feat, and I know you're sad at your playoff loss the fact that your season is completely over Probably you're going pretty home disappointed. just a giant loser but now you don't have to be sad because your footy yeah is in the mail big winner congratulations worth it yeah the fantasy running back of the year who last year was josh jacobs yeah it was remember that guy yeah wow Are you this talking is... about the lowest yards per carry in the nfl this oh, year oh gosh uh but anyways this year the nominees Thor. <laughs> the nominees are Christian McCaffrey, Raheem Mostert, Kyron Williams. Did, wait, Jason, did you signal to end the I, list? I, I signaled to end it after okay. CMC. Okay. Well, Kyron Williams, uh, Rashad White, and the rookie sensation, Jameer Gibbs. The winner, the fantasy running back of the year. Jason called it Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> oh, man, you're so smart. 50% 50, <laughs> 50 of the vote. And Who was second? Raheem Mostert. Yeah, that makes sense. At 22%. Yeah, that makes sense. Moster was a uh, free number two really? running back on the year. That's, the, the, that's the, wild. It's, it's, so when you factor that in and the amount of dominating performances he had. It's a real shame. though. I think Moster could have been in consideration if he played in the fantasy playoffs. Yeah. Like the yep. fact that he yep. he got people there, but he was absent uh, for those final two weeks, and that, that just crushed people. So it's yeah. hard to have him be the, the running back of the year. All right, let's go to the fantasy wide receiver of the year when looking at uh, all of those factors. Last year, Justin Jefferson brought it home. From what I understand, it is probably on one of his mantles in his home. It's there or or circulating the globe in the mail system. Still in the mail? I don't know. We don't know. We, we never. We, we don't, don't do the receipt. Yeah, you know, the sign. Yeah, sign you know phone. how expensive a signature delivery is on one of these? It's like it's like seven dollars. Freight. Yeah. All right, the nominees, CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek Hill, Amon Ross St. Brown, who's been on a yeah. tear, yep. uh, Mike Evans, okay, and the rookie, incredibly, Puka Nakua, a nominee here, the winner of the Fantasy Wide Receiver of the Year, <laughs> my sweetie, yeah. CD oh, Lamb. Really? 39% of the vote, runner-up Tyreek Hill with 22%. CeeDee Lamb running away with it. He beat out Tyreek, huh? So a big consolation to him, who'd just like Dak. Who'd you vote for? You had to vote I for I have the shirt on, Jason, but it's saying, like, I had – no, I mean, I had, had CeeDee the whole year in the in the Dynasty League. The beginning of the year was – It's quite clear it who bumpy. won their championships this year. <laughs> yeah, when Dak, Dak and CeeDee are – I mean, so here's how – Bringing it home. Here's how CeeDee started. Wide receiver, 32. Wide receiver, 10. 43, 20, 45. Now read the parts where I got him. And then after the bye week, 1, 3, 2, 19, 17, 5, 9. He was a reception leader in, in the NFL. Just, it was, I'm saying it was it was a bumpy ride. So 135 for 17, 49, and 12. Yeah, in all I mean, the greatness. Remember that it wasn't perfection. Dak and CD won people championships. That's what matters. 
if they have a new coach, if they have new offensive play caller next year, that will cast a little doubt into what they just did. Not a lot, maybe. Could, yeah, not a but, lot. But there will be some. I think, I think the fact that he evolved. Yeah. I guess they'll, they'll have to pay Dax, so. All right, the fantasy tight end of the year with all those other factors considered. Last year's winner was Travis Kelsey, of course, dominated last year. This year, you got a couple new names on the list, like Sam Laporta and Evan Ingram and David Njoku, alongside TJ Hawkinson and George Kittle, the stalwarts. The winner of the 2023 fantasy tight end of the year. Wow, talk about running away with it, 70 five percent of the vote sam laporta yeah okay okay well deserved right runner up david njoku at only 14 percent of the vote that uh i think it's well deserved but mercy 75 percent that's yeah. the highest we've seen so far that's incredible also that trey mcbride wasn't on that list right no okay no no just check all those single digit end of just, year performances just, i'm just checking there was it's an egregious mistake here <laughs> uh i pulled this out too early uh, breakout player of the year. Last year's winner, Justin Fields. This year, we had Rashad White, Kyron Williams, Isaiah Pacheco with his angry feet, Nico Collins, Sam Laporta, and Puka Nakua. The winner is Jason's crossing his fingers. I hope he's crossing them for. Puka Nakua! Yeah, I was, baby. He's the breakout player of the year. Kyron Williams was second. So apparently, Puka good enough for the breakout player of the year, not good enough for the waiver wire pickup of the year. Well, you know, this is he broke out early. This wasn't the rookie year for uh, Kyron. I'm just so happy because this is, I, I, if, if you're listening the first time, you don't realize how big a deal this is uh, to, what these, was the, to these people. the voting and, there? How close was that? I don't know. I threw it. 41 threw to 28. It. Okay. But – you know, for Puka to be nominated three times and not have taken home a footy, I would have been really, really sad for so, him. Oh, like one of those Oscar winners that just never, they always right. get nominated and they never win it. He deserved an award. So Kyle is sharing news that Puka broke Randy Moss and Jamar Chase, the rookie fantasy records. Seven top 12 finishes, most ever for a rookie. Nine games of 15 plus points, most ever for a rookie. Yeah, and those pale in comparison to getting a footy, but I understand those are big marks. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I just want to share why he got the footy. Right. No, that makes sense. Uh, rookie of the year. Last year, Kenneth Walker brought it home. This year's nominees, Jameer Gibbs, B. John Robinson, Devon A. Chan, Puka Nakua, Sam Laporta. The winner is... Hmm. I don't know. I mean... Back to back? Puka yeah. Nakua! Yeah, okay. All right. Hey! Yeah, hey, baby. Puka. Puka. I love him so much. All right, 65%. Oh, he dominated. Runner up with Sam Laporta. Congratulations, Puka. Your footy is in the freight. It's uh it's a special moment for Puka here today. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy oh, for I, you. I, and and your kind of abundance of joy would not come from him being on your League of Record team. It would just be a, just a neutral adoration of him, not the fact that he's your keeper, franchise guy. Probably. I I simply think I enjoyed all of his awesomeness so much. If you had Puka, you got to experience something special, and it's Puka Nakua. All right, number 11, comeback player of the year. Which fantasy player amazed you the most in their return to relevance? It's a small group here. Last year, we had Saquon coming back. This year, there's only three. Joe Flacco, Baker Mayfield, and Raheem Mostert. And the winner... <laughs> of comeback player of the year in not a landslide here Raheem Mostert with 49% of the vote but a very close second place was Joe Flacco at 41% yeah. of the vote because it was fun it yeah was, I was going to say that's, a, that's too close it for, for, for the actual output on the year it's too close tells you the fantasy playoffs how much they weigh in because Mostert like you said wasn't available for him Mostert. Thank goodness Flacco didn't steal that from Mostert. Mostert was unbelievable this year. I mean, he he for him to not for him to not win this would have been. And a he will be back in Miami next year. He'll just be sharing time with HM. Yeah, so I, I it'd think be interesting to see where those two guys. They'll go. They'll probably play another eight nine years. Right, right. <laughs> <You know>? No. <laughs> All right, Mike. You. I am back up. You're back up. With the steal of the draft. Which player was the absolute best value in the draft compared to their ADP? Last year's winner, Fat Thor, 
<laughs> Josh Jacobs. Yes. This year, the nominees. Rashad White. Seventh round. Mike Evans. Seventh round. Tampa Bay lived in the seventh. David Montgomery. Seventh round. <laughs> Man, trade all your picks for the seventh. Devon A. Chan. Eleventh round. Sam Laporta. Thirteenth round. And Raheem Mostert. Eleventh round. The winner. Steal the of the draft. Steal of the oh, draft. Boy. He stole the draft. He stole your hearts. Raheem Mostert with 50% of back the vote. Back back, baby. Sam Laporta, a weak, pathetic 20%. Oh, really? So Raheem ran away with it. I thought I thought it would be between Raheem and Rashad White. Fun fact on that one. When we announced the nominees last week, Mostert was not announced. And then when I went to fill out my own bracket, I was like, where's Mostert in the steal of the draft? <laughs> so like 3,000 people voted without Mostert available, and he still ran away with it. So getting the top tier running back at the end of the draft, very valuable. It is very valuable. All right, the Playoff King Footy Award. Which player drove fantasy managers to a championship during the playoff weeks 15 through 17? Last year, Jarek McKinnon, one of his most prized possessions of footy from this show because uh, he he won it. He, he won people's He could have repeated, and then he went on the IR. This year's nominees, Lamar Jackson, Joe Flacco, Kyron Williams, James Conner, C.D. Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, and David Njoku. Oh, I like how you said Amon Ross. What's so funny is yeah, Amon Ross like, St. Brown. Uh, C.D. Lamb, it's, I mean, championship winning, but dude, Amon Ross was <laughs> probably better. Amon Ross was incredible. When you have that performance in championship winning. I know. I and know. Njoku. Here we go. I the know. winner is... Maybe a surprise, Jason. Kyron Williams. Yeah, Kyron wow. Williams. RB5, 11, and 1. 27% of the vote. Next up, CD Lamb with 16%. David Njoku with 15%. Wow. Kyron Williams, I think, surprised you, Jay. It did. I, I thought for sure, easy CD Lamb with that championship week performance. How we much only, we talked We have up. one vote apiece, Jay. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that whole Dak CD experience this season oh, you know so nice. your your <laughs> your second half sleeper pick of Dak yeah. Andy's early adoption uh, in himself and investing in them and talking them up I think a lot of the Foot Clan by the midway point in the season had acquired CD and Dak and so I I just expected him to run away with it but good for you Kyron well two big time awards left starting with uh Jason's gonna have the honor of announcing the nickname of the year. Oh, baby. You have Gabe the Babe for Gabe Davis. JK2L for JK Dobbins. Schoonman for Luke Schoonmaker. Schoonman. Cameron for Cam Akers. Banana Rama for Will Levis. Brett Rippin' Farts. Jake Ferguson was Fergalicious. Quentin Johnston, huge with his huge drops. Bilbo Bagent was Tyson Bagent. <laughs> T. McBee for Trey McBride. Josh Jacobs back again this year as Fat Thor. Brevin Almighty for Brevin Jordan. Danny DeVito for Tommy DeVito. And Arthur Sith for Arthur Smith. <laughs> And the winner, very nice, is yes, yes, no, Brett Rippin Farts, baby, Rippin Farts, Brett Rippian. You have never had more pride or reason to be prideful in your life. You have a footy that is in the mail. I suggest this can't be the winner. Putting that on the toilet because Rippin Farts. That's how you played. And how you close was this vote? 43% for Brett Rippin Farts. The, what? The runner up. That's, that's so many that's names. So many names. That's a huge number. Uh, actually, it looks like the top three guys here counted for the majority. You've got 43% for Brett. for rip, for Rippin Farts. You got 35% for Arthur Sith. Okay. And in third place, Fat Thor with 33%. Oh, this one is memorialized and immortalized. Wow. You Forever. were so excited. You look like you got a little spittle in your beard. Oh, mm. Well, better than ripping farts. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bilbo nice. Bajan was fifth. Really? Where yeah. was Cameron? Sixth. All right. 
<laughs> so Brett Rip and Farts. <clears throat> yeah. Congratulations, man. Come on, man. This is <laughs> worth it. I mean, if you had played well, you never would have got this nickname and you never would have got your most prized possession. I can't see this is this will live on now because he won't play anymore. But next year when we're doing this show, we will have to say last year's winner was Brett Brett Rip and, Rip and Farts. Fart. This is everyone out there's fault. Thank you. Folks. Also Jason's fault. All right. We have one more very special award. The show moment of the year. Wait. This song is way too long for my nominees. Here we go. Last year, it was my voice crack. The nominees for the show moment of the year. Taylor Swift joined the NFL and she also joined this show. Waiver. Rankings. Rankings. Old man Thielen. <laughs> Mock draft anger with Jason getting sniped repeatedly. Show 1500 was special. It also had a special musical number. Jason turned into a creeper behind the bush. The game perv. The wheel of shame Alvin. Geese talk. Jason gets a not thought. And the trade betrayal between Andrew and Josh. Very well done. Very well done. That's a lot of special moments from this past year. It's been a great year, everybody. Thank goodness we didn't put the moment Jason invented Brett Ribbon farts. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have won back to back. Here we go. The winner of the show moment of the year. It's the trade betrayal at 47%. The runner up at 21%. Jason being perverted for. I want this game. For games. And third, old man Thielen, baby. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. What? what? I won something. <laughs> I didn't win. Um, oh. Thanks to Brooks, all the top 10 moments of the show are available right now on YouTube. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers if you want to go watch them all. I do. Well, you should. I haven't seen this clip. Yes. it. Uh, he released it on Saturday. So it is available. You can watch through them and enjoy. And a huge thank you to everybody that took the time to go and vote. It's been a heck of a year for fantasy football. We've had a ton of fun, and uh, we are still with you. This is a year-round show trying to get you primed and ready. The NFL is pretty much a year-round sport at this point. We just talked about how it dominates everything all the time. And the NFL draft will be here, will be here, and the waiver um, opportunities for teams to pick up free agents. All that stuff is coming very, very soon. We're getting into the truth episodes, uh, taking a deep dive and looking at the top performers at every position. Did they really provide you value or will they just have a nice fantasy finish that confuses you going into next year? Uh, we'll be reflecting on the season. I'm digging into all the data right now. We'll, yeah. have, we'll have the the actual truth. Yes, yes. The Can we get the truth, truth on how Brett Rippin Farts got the nickname of the year? Yeah. Jason went door to door. Mm -hmm. Look, I spent. I want. I didn't even want it on the list. <laughs> Did you really try to get it off the education list? Education yes. fund. I uh, emptied it out with robocalls. Server farms. Yeah, he has server, server farms. farms. I wasn't gonna let that not Rippin. vote for me as a vote for Rippin Farts. Well, I look, Mike. This is the sh this is our lives. We've can hey, this hey. is what we do for a living. If this is what they wanted, this is our legacy. This, yes, yeah. People wanted ripping farts. I mean, it feels good, man, <laughs> to rip a fart. Yeah, you know, it feels good to rip a fart. <laughs> and when someone's playing that poorly, it feels good to just tell them they're ripping farts. What team is he on, Jay? He was on the Rams. Okay, now he, he, he moved. He moved, didn't he? Yeah, they got rid of. Him. They went and signed Carson Wentz. Off, the, they're like, okay, we gotta do something. I think Rippin got signed somewhere else. He's ripping somewhere I else. I thought he went to like the the, the, the Vikings. The Vikings. Well, first he went to Seattle for a couple of weeks, and then he went to the Jets. Oh, okay, but yeah, he started a place up, where Rippin is right at home. Just ripping him in the city. All right, I better shut this thing down. Goodness gracious. Thank you very much for joining us. Like I said, the truth begins on Thursday. We'll look at the quarterback position. Enjoy the rest of the football. Or you already did, but we don't know what happened There'll yet. There'll be more. So we'll talk about it on Thursday. Goodbye. Bill's dominated. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>